Simulink helps you model from the component level to the system level. And that's true for software and for physical systems. And a tool that can handle all that is key as you are tasked with building more complex systems that include software, multiple components, different domains, and so on. If you're working on systems with distributed architectures, uh, perhaps you're integrating software components using middleware, well, components in those software composition, compositions generate events and data asynchronously. So it can be a challenge to model that message-based communication and also to generate code from that. So to make that challenge easier, we introduced a new library and that library is called Messages and Events. That's part of Simulink now. And messages are useful because they combine events with data. And so this library gives you blocks for sending, receiving, and queuing messages. And there are other blocks like the sequence viewer that allow you to visualize all event activity in a model. Before this library, just to give you some context, state flow and sim events were the main ways to work with messages in Simulink. But now you can tackle more complex use cases with all these tools. And sim events gives you a great way to handle things like message routing and delay between components. And with state flow, you can do the state management, logic, and the handshaking. There are examples available with this new library to help you get started. And here are a couple of those you can check out in the product today. All right, so we saw that messages give you a new way to model software components, and they also simplify the integration of those software components. Now let's talk about visualization and control. And in the messages library, there is also a sequence viewer block that I mentioned before. And the goal with this block is to help you visualize the messages and the events in your model. And in fact, you see it here. What you see in the Y axis looking down is time. And then on the X axis are the different components. And the data that you see are the events that happen and the data that is contained by those uh, events or those messages. So that is one way or one tool that helps you visualize uh, event activity in your model. Another new tool that you have for modeling runtime software is the schedule editor. And this feature helps you control the execution of components in your models. And using it, you can also manage that scheduling process visually. And what you see here, are partitions of a model, and you can control the execution order of those partitions uh, interactively. And this works for both export function models and RAID-based models. And if you're already doing scheduling with Stateflow, then the schedule editor also allows you to schedule execution based on events from Stateflow. So those are the new capabilities that I wanted to cover for modeling runtime software. Then moving on, let's talk about analyzing simulations. Simulink has also been getting updates and new ways to visualize simulation data. And one of those new ways is with the record block. So this block shows you the data, it gives you some simulation controls for you to run simulations. And as the model runs, you can actually visualize the data that it's generating. This block also gives you a convenient replacement for the two workspace and two file blocks. And one advantage is that you can actually log data to both locations from the same interface. And the record block also supports the same visualization types that are supported by the simulation data inspector, like spark lines, time plots, maps, XY plots, and more. And in fact, when you want to do more in-depth analysis or further analysis, then the simulation data inspector is available for you. Now, the simulation data inspector is another capability I want to highlight because even though it has been around for a few years, we keep adding new capabilities to make it more powerful and more flexible for you. For example, one of the latest updates is the ability to visualize signals as spark lines. So you can stack signals or multiple signals in the same subplot. And when there are a lot, you get this scroll bar here to see all of them. You can also visualize scatter plots uh, as XY plots, and that lets you see the relationship between two signals. So for example, here I'm selecting the motor speed and the motor torque, and I can visualize that 
as a scatter. I can also replay the simulation when I need to share the insights. And in this way, the person that receives the data, they can just replay that data. They don't have to re rerun the entire simulation. And you can also generate interactive HTML reports. And when it comes to comparing results across simulation runs, you can actually compare individual signals or you can compare entire runs and you do that with just a few clicks. No need to write any code for that. Now, if you need to automate the analysis and you need to write the code, then the simulation data inspector has an API that you can use for that. So those are some of the new capabilities that you now have available for analyzing simulations. Moving on, let's talk about new capabilities for sharing your models. And that's important because once you've analyzed your simulations and your models, others may need to look at your work as well. And what I want to cover here are dashboard blocks. And these dashboard blocks give you a way to focus your attention and your interactions in the parts of the model that matter the most to you or to those that you're sharing your models with. And so instead of having to go deep into all the details of the system, you focus again your attention to the parts that truly matter. And here is an example. Uh, so I can change the engine speed in this model. We're using the SL demo fuel sys example that is included with the product. So here I change the engine speed and you can see the reactions to that. At the same time here, I can change uh, other parameters to insert failures and see how my system reacts to that. Now. In case you didn't notice, this is the same mechanism that we're using in our checklist model. Uh, and I also want to highlight that there are uh, switches, LED lights, scopes, gauges, and also customizable gauges that you can fully customize the appearance of. Uh, for example, you see that with the engine temperature and also this pressure gauge that I have here. An advantage of these dashboard blocks is that you can actually group them together and you can turn them into a panel. A great thing when you turn them into a panel is that now this panel comes with you to different levels of the model hierarchy. And that can save you time when you're troubleshooting at different levels. And right now you see the, mod the dashboard is relatively big, so I can double click to minimize it and then it's still still visible, but it takes up a lot less space and I can continue building or editing my model. So that is one great capability for sharing your models. Now let's move on to integrating external components. 